And I pray tonight that you'll stretch your hand from heaven and touch our lives again. Quicken our bodies. Remove every sickness and every infirmity and every pain. And Lord, I pray tonight each one lost will be found and saved. I pray every believer filled with the Holy Ghost. I pray every body sick will be healed. And before heaven tonight, for we too know who we are. Your word declares he knoweth our frame. He remembers we are dust. But we too remember. We too know who we are. And that's why tonight with all our hearts we say, we will give you the glory. We will give you the honor. We're going to give you the praise. Because all we are is dust. That's all we are is dust. Only you are God. You are able to do exceeding abundantly above all we ask or think. Only you are God. Only you are able to keep us from falling and present us before the throne with joy for you are God. Only you can do the impossible because you are God. And only you can cancel the plans of Satan for you are God Almighty. And as we live our hands before you as a token of our love, holy, 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 sing it everywhere. Wonderful for comprehension. Nothing ever seen or heard. Sing it quiet. Sing it safe.
Jesus so glorious come prepare in us your temple we are born as a living stone where you're enthroned and as you rose from death in power come rise with him our worship Come rise upon our praise. Let the hand that saw you reign come and clothe us with your glory. Come draw by your grace and over glory of your presence. We your temple There's miracles happening here. There's miracles.
reach out and touch the hem of his garment. Touch the hem of his garment. Suzanne, honey, what's going on? Fibromyalgia for eight years came out of wheelchair. Fibromyalgia for eight came, years. Eight years came out of the wheelchair. wheelchair tonight. Keep walking. enemy try to stop you from coming to the crusade but here you are and God has healed you of fibromyalgia did you feel the power of God go through you yeah. um, I also have a broken tailbone or caustic bone and that's where I felt the most what did you feel what did you feel go through you it just like went away I mean it just disappeared I, I was up sitting in a wheelchair in a lot of pain and then the next thing you know there's been a praying for somebody two seats down, two wheelchairs down. And when she, they were praying for her, mine just left. Wait, they were praying for somebody else? And God healed you while they were praying for another lady next. Keep walking, I want to see this. People, give the Lord a mighty hand. Isn't this marvelous? Jesus, what can we say? What can we say? Sing it! Now, this is a quite unusual I finished preaching I looked down and I saw this piece I thought it was a paper upside down I thought maybe it came out of my Bible and I like things to be neat 
and I picked it up while the lady was walking. I picked it up and I noticed it's a picture. Someone who got saved tonight must have thrown the picture here and didn't see it till now. The picture of a young man and there's a name on the back, Valdez White. The Lord just said, pray for him. I don't know the young man. I never seen his picture. I never seen his face, but it was laying here upside down. A precious mother must have thrown this picture here. This young man will be saved the next two weeks. Dear Jesus, we believe for Valdez. We believe for his salvation. In Jesus' name, amen. There it is. Now pick her up. Huh? This was on the floor too. Lord, thank you. I don't know what this child needs, but thank you. It's done in Jesus' name. And lady, I'm going to tell you something. The Holy Spirit is telling me this to tell you, you will never, ever, ever, as long as you live, have the same sickness. It is gone for good. God bless you. Take your seats, please. Pastor, two years suffering with primary pulmonary heart disease. It never gets old, Steve. Pastor, I never get tired of seeing all these miracles happen. It astounds me. Tell me, sir. Suffering two years with a terrible heart disease, which was a valve condition in her heart. Yeah. 24 hours a day, oxygen. Power of God came upon her tonight. She has taken away her oxygen. She is free of her oxygen. She's breathing. She's declaring the glory of God. Pastor, when she came up, she said, that's the fastest I've walked in two years. She says, God has healed her tonight. And you know you're healed. How do you know you're healed? Because I feel it. You see, that's what happened with the woman with the issue of blood. She felt in her body that she was healed. The scripture says, I feel like better than I felt, and I don't know when. Sweet Jesus, thanks. Thanks for the anointing. Oh, that's right. You feel a little, a little weak. That's the anointing. Don't be afraid, my dear. Thanks. Are you the daughter? Yes, sir. Now make sure to take your mom back to the doctor. Have the doctor check her. I have good news for you. You won't find that problem there. Thanks. Sue. This woman just came out of the hospital three weeks ago, had fibroid tumors in her... Had? Fibroid tumors in her stomach, in her hips. Had? Had. The lumps are totally gone out of her stomach and her hips tonight, and she's totally free from pain. Uh, Tell me. Um, I was in the hot... I've had cancer in uh, my right kidney, and they um, removed that tumor. And so I started developing some through my abdomen and on my hips and legs and um, they put me in and did the CAT scans to make sure the cancer wasn't back and they said it was just fibroids but they were very very painful and if they get big enough you know they would have to do more surgery but what happened tonight well I was hurting and aching and you know from being here for sure. several hours and I just started praying I said Lord I love you <laughs> and I said <laughs> I said, I just want to be used of you. And I should, your word says I don't have to put up with this pain. And I said, look into my heart. I just love you. I just want to be about your business, Lord. And you know, I can't do that if I'm hurting. You see, sickness is not from the Lord. No, it's not. And I say, God, I love you with all my heart. All I want to do is serve you. See, the scripture says, you shall serve the Lord your God. He shall bless your bread and bless your water. And take sickness away from the midst of thee. And she said, Lord, I want to serve you. That touched his heart. 
that touched his heart. My husband and I said, honey, Phil, they're gone. <laughs> what church do you people go to? It's called, it's, it's called the church in Butler, Georgia. We drove about four hours to get here, and it's a spirit-filled interdenominational church. Are you happy for your wife? Real happy. <laughs> Are you amazed? Amazed. He's helped them. So he felt he know when I said feel. <laughs> I'm glad he's your husband. Yes. Dear Jesus, oh, thanks for the oh, thanks for the anointing. Thanks for the anointing of the Holy Ghost. Isn't that precious? Were you listening? You were listening to over here. Did you see what happened over there? Well, you have to watch it on television. What happened here, sir? Four years ago, when we were here in Birmingham, this lady was greatly healed of microvalve prolapse, three leaking valves in her heart. God healed her instantly. She had a Jewish doctor that was overwhelmed with it. Tonight, she came to the service suffering with diverticulitis. Bring that lady back a second. Just a moment back. Give me a second. I just want you to know, you just blessed me tonight when you were talking, sweetheart. I'm so glad you shared all that. Thank you. You know, you make my job easy. Bless your heart. I love him. That's why I love listening to you. God bless you. God bless you. You take care of her, sir. I know you will. Tonight, suffering with diverticulitis, Pastor, she had a whole lot of pain in her side. Her husband would have to get her up out of the bed in the morning. Power of God came upon her tonight. All the pain and has left her body. And she was healed of mitral valve the last time we were here. Four years ago. Four years ago. And now. Five. And three leaking heart valves. That was the past, I know, but not. You confirmed it with the doctors after that, correct? Yes. But the Jewish doctor said what? He didn't want to hear about it, anything that God did, because he didn't believe in God. He said, well, that's all right. He said, you don't have any heart problems anymore, but I don't believe God healed you. Well, my dear, I said, I just don't... pray for him that God will touch him. All I know is I'm glad the Lord has touched you and the Lord has healed you tonight. Sweet Jesus, thank you for the anointing and touch that dear husband. Oh, that's glory. May your kingdom be established. This woman was on a missions trip to Brazil six years ago. A bus seat crushed her knees. She's been in pain. She Wait, honey, a bus seat? A bus seat. Crushed, crushed her knees. Her knee mean like the seat fell on her knee or what? It fell on her knees. The seat fell on my knees and crushed my knees, and I had two days walking through airports, so I did a lot of damage. I've had surgery. How, how, and how long ago was that? 96. And tonight, what happened? Tonight, I felt fingers walking up and down my back, and... You felt fingers? And while I was praying for the lady next to me who had cancer, I felt no pain. You see what happened? You forgot yourself prayed for somebody else and the Lord came and touched you and you actually felt fingers that's right just tender warm loving fingers gentle and it's gone and it's gone but Benny, I'm going back to South America <laughs> her daughter was the first one that came out of the wheelchair tonight that was your daughter with fibromyalgia yeah. yes it is God gave you a whole family healing that's right give the Lord a mighty hand people that's marvelous <laughs> pardon sir we brought her here to be healed. And where, where, where are you from now? Where do you live now? Knoxville. Knoxville. And you are a missionary. I'm a short-term mission volunteer, which I highly recommend for anybody. <laughs> Dear Jesus, thank you. Oh, dear goodness. Thanks for the anointing. Here it goes. That's glory. That's glory on you, sir. That's glory on you. The mighty power of God available today. For your healing let's believe right now dearest jesus wonderful lord i come to you in faith believing and i agree with that one watching this program that today is their day this is their moment for a miracle remove that sickness i pray remove that disease remove the spirit of fear that bondage in Jesus' name. 
I rebuke it in the name of the Lord. Thank you, Lord. Skin cancer is being healed. Emphysema is being healed. Diabetes is being healed. A blood condition is being healed. Someone's circulation has just been healed. A woman pregnant with a little boy. The Lord just healed you completely. I don't know what's been going on, but you had pain in your body. God just healed you. Thank you, Lord. And eye disease is being healed. Father, heal everyone watching in Jesus' wonderful name. Amen and amen. Nothing is impossible with God. And Father God, I lay my hands on these prayer requests and I believe with the people today for miracles in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Upcoming crusades going to be very exciting. This week in Tulsa, Oklahoma, and then maybe Senna, come this Thursday and Friday. Then Anaheim, California, one service only, May 24th, at the Anaheim Convention Center. Columbus, Ohio, is May 30, 31, at the Schottenstein Center. Then we come to Sydney, Australia, June 7 and 8, at the Sydney Entertainment Center. Dallas, Texas, is June 27, 28, at the American Airlines Center in Toronto, Canada, is July 11, 12th at the Air Canada Arena. We'll also come to New Jersey in uh, July 25th, 26th. Make sure to get this book I've been telling you about, Miracle Food Cures from the Bible. I've had this book for months and I feel you would love to have it. For a $50 donation, you can get this book today by, by calling 1-800-433-1900. 1 800 433 God wants you well and whole not only through his supernatural power, but through the natural. God will use this to bless you. Again, 1-800-433-1900 for a $50 donation. Remember, there's nothing impossible with God. He loves you. On the program tomorrow, more of his mighty power and presence from Birmingham, Alabama. I'll see you again. Bye-bye. know is we God's people better wake up to the fact our time is running out Amen. quick Amen. Amen. Yes. and 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 Paul it's 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 not uh, it's not an accident that suddenly all at the same time while the uh, things are happening with TBN all over the world and here our crusades you've been with me to uh, you know a few in the last few months while all this is happening, the doors God is opening, you think it's just, you know, God thought, well, let's just do it. It's a good idea. No, no, no. It's his agenda. This is your day. The multifaceted ministry of Benny Hinn is touching the world with the saving, healing, and life-changing gospel of Jesus Christ. Through massive crusades, daily television, feeding programs, orphanage support, church planning projects, and much, much more. Stay tuned for the next 30 minutes because this is your day to experience God's miracle working power in your life. This is your day. This is your day. Your miracle is on the way. Expect it to happen today in Jesus' mighty and glorious name. On the program today, you're going to see the power of God from Birmingham, Alabama. In fact, this whole week, it's going to be awesome. Now let's go and see the glorious, mighty power of God displayed. And remember, He loves you. Remember, there's nothing impossible with Him. And He will answer your prayer. Watch this.
sing tonight, Jesus. your name this night. Hallelujah. Come on, church, lift your voice. tonight lift your voice to him sing
He's been on oxygen for five months. The doctor said he could die at any time. The power of God came on to him tonight, and he's walking without his cane. Warm feeling all through my body. I feel so good. I feel the power of God just all over me. And you felt God's power go through you? Yes. Just moving all through my body. And what was wrong with you again? I had an inoperative heart. Three bypasses was closed off. And my body was <laughs> getting weaker and weaker. My legs would suffer pain. And now I don't feel that pain no more. <laughs> Sometimes when I hear these tremendous testimonies, you just don't know what happens inside of me. I'm just so grateful to the Lord. called me to serve him. So grateful. You heard me say, thanks for the privilege. Thanks for the privilege. I mean it with every atom of my being. Thanks for the privilege. You heard the wife. Yes, sir. The doctors, he just had 18% of his heart that was left pumping, and they told me he'd just die any time. <laughs> This has been going on since October, and it gets weaker and weaker, but he just kept praying and praying, and he said, if we can get to that crusade, I know that God is going to heal me. <laughs> he uses a cane, and he's been using a walker, and he just can not hardly get around at all. He's been so weak. <laughs> I sing praises to your name. Help him. Praises to your name. Joyful, 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 joyful. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, for he is my Lord who healeth me. Thanks, thanks, thanks. I sing praises to your name. I sing praises to your name. For your name is great. Thank you, Lord. Pastor, this is Melissa. Her husband is in the truck. He's watching Melissa tonight. She's had a tumor on the left side of her She's head. on staff. She's a She's volunteer. On, yes. She works with our camera people. Her husband is in the truck. He's watching his wife right this very moment, hearing what I'm fixing to say. She said, when you called out a brain tumor, the anointing of God came upon her. Where? In the... Standing right over right here. there. The anointing of God came upon her. She felt a heat that's just flowing. Doctor said that if they don't take it out, it could kill her. They say, she said, if they do take it out, it could render her incapable of communicating. But oh, thank you, Jesus, the cross, the Christ of Calvary. She said tonight, and this is what I love what she said, Pastor. You see this? There's an old Alabama saying and Georgia saying, you know it and you know her. I said, honey, is there any way you can tell me, show me? She said, no, but I know it. Paul said, I know that I know that I know. I believe tonight she knows. And she said, I'll show you the MRI when I come back. Now, is that the same girl you mentioned? You, you don't know this. Take the microphone from Steve and tell us. You know, staff members are close to her family. And this is a special girl. Her husband's been faithful to this ministry in the TV department. She comes and, and he came before the service. Kurt came before the service and said, would you pray for one of the 
father. Melissa. Huh? Melissa. Melissa, right? And that the Lord would heal her so she doesn't have to go through the surgery. Now and you she... asked me to pray for her at the end of the service. Yes, and sir. And her, her husband is still in the, in the truck. Yes, sir. So he did not know she was getting healed. He's just finding out right now. Somebody go get him from the truck or just get over here. What's his name? Larry. Larry, Larry, come quick. Somebody else can do his job for the moment. Stephen, while we wait for him. He's still the cornerstone, Brock. Oh, Jesus is the cornerstone. Come for seven. There's your husband, come. To atone. Go rejected by his own. Sing it, James, with him. When I am a simple prayer on this stone, I am a prayer. She said, We have four kids. When the sea. Now they have their mommy back. The Come on, thank him, will you? Rock of ages, clap for me. Let me hide myself in thee. Rock of ages, so secure. Hallelujah. For all time, it shall endure. Till their children. power of God is all over her. Look at that anointing on you. You know, it's, it's not often staff members get healed, but she had a brain tumor and they told me tonight as you heard. Now the four kids can have mommy back. Bless you, Larry. People, give the Lord a mighty hand of praise.
That's says she came from England, fasted 40 days for God to heal her kidney. She's been on dialysis. She said the Lord touched her tonight. She says she's healed. That's the anointing. That's the anointing. Pick her up, please, Eleanor. Father in heaven. You came from England to be healed. So what was wrong with you? Just one more time, please. I am a kidney patient, and I'm going to dialysis twice a week. You, you are what now? Kidney patient. Kidney, yeah. Yeah. And uh, we came, six months ago, we came to uh, Alabama Mobile, same crusade. I had lupus. The doctor said, no more lupus in your body. And now God healed you again? Yes. I am kidney patient. Jesus, I give you praise. A choir quickly join hands behind me. You see, you've ministered so beautifully. Now God wants to reward you. You sang and ministered now. God wants to reward you. Touch the choir with your spirit. Notice just the choir fell. Notice how God answered that prayer. Look at that. Just the choir. Nobody on either side. Just the, give the Lord a mighty hand. That's marvelous. Now, it's your turn. Join hands all over this building. You better have a seat behind you. We don't understand the power of God, but we know it's real. We don't know why people fall, but we know it's real. It's a fresh baptism of power. Ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost come upon you. Now, Lord, touch the people. Lift your hands to heaven, saints. Touch! Is glory that is glory that is glory people give the Lord a mighty shout of hallelujah that is glory the mighty power of God it's yours it's mine and it's free we just have to ask and he'll fill us afresh Fill us again, I pray. Sweet, dear Jesus, fill us afresh. Fill our hearts. We surrender to you. And Master, I lay my hands on these prayer requests right now, and I believe with the people for miracles. I believe today for supernatural, mighty things to happen in their life. I pray bondage will go and sickness will go in Jesus' mighty and awesome name. Lord, I stretch my hands in faith, believing today is their day for a miracle. I rebuke that sickness. I command that disease to go in Jesus' name. Come on, just stretch your hands right now. Believe God with me in Jesus' mighty name. I command that sickness to go. I command the disease to go in Jesus' name. I pray that mighty power your glorious power right now will flow through every one of them in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Cancer is being healed. A heart condition is being healed. Someone's left ear just popped open. Thank you, Lord. 
Cancer is being healed again. Thank you, Lord. I rebuke that in Jesus' mighty name. Skin cancer. Thank you, Lord. A lower back is being healed. Thank you, Jesus. I see someone with lupus. I command that to go in Jesus' mighty name. Thank you, Lord. Asthma is being healed. I command it to go in Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen. Healings are happening all over right now. Receive yours. Don't wait for me to call out your healing. Just receive it in Jesus' mighty name. That's right. Next crusade is going to be in Anaheim, California. One service only, May 24th at the Anaheim Convention Center. And then, by the way, on the Sunday evening, I speak for Bishop Blake. Psalm 37, verse 23 and on. The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord, and he delighteth in his way. Though he fall, he shall not be utterly cast down, for the Lord upholdeth him with his hand. I have been young, and now am old. Yet have I not seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed begging bread. Our God is so gracious. He will never leave you, never forsake you, never turn his ear away from you, never disappoint you. He loves you. And again, his name is Jesus. Now let's go see his mighty power displayed. I'm going to come back and pray with you. Believing with you this is your day for your deliverance. Watch this. We sing as the elders.
the people worship the Lamb. Let the people glorify the Lamb of God. Pastor, this is Raven. She's a Raven beauty, isn't she? Four years old. Last night, God did a miracle in her body. She was born with a defect in her heart. They are anticipating open heart surgery, even replacement of her heart. Last night, when we began to sing hallelujah, her heart rate dropped from 120 beats a minute to 91. The doctor just checked her a few moments ago. It's 80. She had a one... I'm so thrilled to tell you she'll see her fifth birthday and her sixth birthday and her seventh birthday. Pastor, she has a verse. I don't know if she'll give it to you or not, but she gave it to me a moment ago. You want to give it to me? He was wounded for our transgression. What's her name? Raven. You're yawning. You're having fun. Yes. Do you know you're pretty? Huh? Yes. She's not, she's supposed to have a heart transplant. She's not a candidate right now because her antibodies are so high. They're supposed to be between zero and ten. Last we checked, her antibody count was 41. But right now, I feel that the Lord has healed my baby, that when we go back to the doctors, the antibody count will be down, and then she can become a candidate. Lord, I thank you. God bless you. Well, make sure, I'm sure I'm going to find out from Nancy. She tells me everything. We follow every one of them up. Bye, Raven. Bye, darling. Thank you, sweetheart. Pastor, this lady here was in a car accident. A young man stolen a car, ran through a light, broke. When, she, when he rammed into her car, they had to cut the car open. She's going to show you how she used to walk. She's going to show you how she used to. Her legs were broken. Four different parts of the ribs were broken. And now she was running and dancing over there. Show She's going to show you how she can walk now. How can now. you walk now? Show me, show, me how, show me how you can walk now, my dear. She can bend. She's all free. The pain is all gone. She's telling me. Oh, that, ooh, that goes down on. Whoa. Then I only hit her, it came on you. Something happened. And now I know. Sing it, Brad. Taylor is your name. You no, know that I work for, we work out of your ministry. We do buses for you, for your ministry. You do? Who's Miss Taylor? Minister Taylor. He's out here in the audience. Oh, Minister Taylor. We do, I, we do buses for your ministry. Where is he? Where is he? He's out like, there. He is over there. Come here, sir. So you put buses together? Yes, from Orlando, Florida. He does. Here we work together for your ministry. We're the first one on your list. I never knew that. 
so you got, you brought five buses. We did it in Jacksonville. We had five buses along from Atlanta. He brought one down from Mobile, Alabama. Where do you live again? I live in Orlando. Orlando. You live here. You put bus you you put buses together, bring people to the crusade. We do. The Lord touched me seven years ago to put buses together for your ministry. The Lord, the Lord called me into the ministry in Birmingham, Alabama, 1997. Well, sir, all I want to say is thank you for doing it. May the Lord bless you for that. She and I have been doing bus ministry together. We started in Orlando. We had six buses in Jacksonville. In Jacksonville, yeah. Jacksonville. So the Lord healed you in Birmingham. He didn't heal you in Jacksonville, Lord. No, I've been trying. I said, why not come you know, here? I was telling him, I just got off his bus coming in here. I said, oh, Mr. Taylor, I'm so depressed. I'm like, God ain't going to heal me. He said, he took my hand. He said, don't say that. He will lend us off. He said, don't say that. Don't say that. I said, you know, after he took my hand again, he said, don't say that. And I came here and sat down and Amanda with the grace to pray for me. And the God just healed me just like nothing. God is so good. I tell you, God. You see, it's God's timing. It's God's timing. Dear Jesus, whoa. Uh, uh, touch this man for my name's sake. Whoa. Pick him up. Oh, God bless you, sir. Lord, God bless you. Keep bringing more buses, my friend. Keep bringing the buses in Jesus' name. Pick up my friend. Now you go and praise the Lord, my dear. She can't walk too well right now. Here, help her, Sam. Sir, Brock. Pastor, 20 years, an alcoholic, drug addict. God delivered her this morning. She says she is free. That's the one I called earlier. For how many years? 20 years. And the power of God came on you up there. <laughs> it's a love I've never felt before, Mom. Pardon? It's a love I've never felt before, Mom. You felt love. Yes, sir. <laughs> Jesus, thank you. You're her friend? Yes, she goes to my church. Sorry? She goes to my church. Which church is that? Christian Life Ministries. Oh, I see you're wearing that. Jesus, thank you, thank you. What a mighty God we serve. Pastor, this lady here had a tumor in the back. This morning it's gone. This one here also has scoliosis, curved in the spine. All the pain is gone. Both of them been healed this morning. This one had a tumor. This one right here. In the back. It disappeared this morning. Scoliosis This over one there. has scoliosis, has so much pain. She just had an x-ray. The other one over there with scoliosis, all the... You're the gone. one with the scoliosis, yes. right? Went night before last to the chiropractor. I've been hurting for years. Um, he said, well, got bad news, good news, bad news. I, I probably can fix it best I can over years. He said, it's curved, but the bad thing, it's twisted too. And he said, the first vertebrae right below the brain stem, the first one up there, I don't know this stuff but anyway he said it's going that way and uh he gave me an adjustment and i felt better and i uh do housekeeping for the elderly with my job and i've seen much pain um uh, they're on all these medicines and i went home and i have got seven medicines in my cabinet i don't want to grow old since i and and uh, but now the Lord healed you this morning. And I, I stood back there and I said, Lord, I'm going to praise you even if you don't. I praise you, but please heal it. You made this body. You can straighten that. Amen, Lord. But, and I believe he did. We agree, Lord. We agree health is hers for the rest of her life. In Jesus' mighty and glorious name, touch the husband, Lord, for thy name's sake. That's the glory of God, sir, right there on you. Mr. Brock. Pastor, I've heard you preach it from time to time. We go from faith to faith. Right. Three years ago, this lady was suffering with a brain tumor in Atlanta. God touched her body and healed her of that brain tumor. She's here to testify about it today. But three weeks ago, she broke her foot, fractured her right foot, 
has been on these crutches, supposed to stay in the cast for seven weeks. She says the Lord touched her this morning. She can walk without the crutches, without the sandal. Oh, she says she's Lord. healed in the name of Jesus. Somebody say praise the Lord. Yes, Henry. Pastor, this is beautiful. This lady here had arthritis for 10 years. She came last night to the service. She said she left her brace in the car. She forgot a brace in the car. She was using that cane. She said that all the pain is gone this morning. You got to let her tell you. <laughs> I forgot my brace. <laughs> I, it, my, it started working on me at home. I think if I could get up here, I'd just be all right. And a while ago, I just put the cane down and just walked. I just, I said, I used to walk like that girl did a while ago, but I haven't done that in 10 years. And now the pain is gone. I, it's gone. I, I praise the Lord. I got congested heart failure, too. Jesus. Lord, a perfect miracle, a perfect healing. Oh, that's glory, that's glory, that's glory, that's glory. Jesus, I worship you. I worship you, I worship you, I worship you. Will you please stand, everyone here? Jesus, we just want to thank you. Lift your hands and tell us, Jesus, we just want to thank you. Pastor, this dear lady fell and broke, ruptured two of her discs, her fourth and fifth vertebrae. God touched her this morning. She said all the pain is gone. She doesn't need this cane any how long longer. Have you, how, how, how long have you suffered? Two years. And now, gone. Gone. What did you feel go through you there? It just left. When I came in, the lady prayed for me and told me all I had to do was believe. That's it. That's it. And, and you did? I did. Sweet Jesus, thanks. There's none like him. None like the Lord. And he loves you. And he'll answer that prayer of yours. Remember something. He never changes. I know you know that. But it's good to remind you. The Word of God says Jesus Christ the same yesterday, today, forever. So no matter what you're facing today, there's nothing too difficult for the Lord. No matter what sickness you're fighting, He will heal it. Trust Him. Wait for His timing. You know, sometimes we think God doesn't care because we pray and He just doesn't do it. Timing. Everything is timing. He knows best. He's God Almighty. Let's believe him today is your day. Let's just expect that today is your day. He said, if any two will agree, it shall be done. So let's agree. That, that's his word. Remember that. That's his promise. Come on, stretch your hands. Believe with me. If you want to come put your hands across the screen, that's fine. They're just faith, that's all. Just faith in God. There's no healing power in my hands, you know that. We're just coming into agreement today. And we believe. And we expect this miracle to happen today. You said in your word, if any two of you shall agree on earth as touching anything, they shall receive it of my Father which is in heaven. And so we believe today that that healing, that deliverance, that peace of mind, Lord, whatever your people are believing for, I believe with them now. I believe with that one believing now in Jesus' name. Receive your miracle in Jesus' name. Receive the manifestation of the power of the Holy Spirit in Jesus' name. Receive your deliverance now in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. 
uh, someone's lungs have just been healed. A heart has just been healed. A liver, cancer in the liver is being healed. Someone's left leg, tremendous pain is there, but God has just healed it. I uh, see a bleeding ulcer healed. I see something wrong with someone's gums. God is healing that too. Thank you, Lord, for every miracle. I give you praise. I see a tumor also healed in Jesus' name. A lady wearing something red. God has just healed you. HIV healed in Jesus' name. A young man, I see him uh, in prison. I see tremendous torment in his mind. God has set him, uh, is setting him free right now. Thank you, Jesus. Also, drug addiction has just been totally free in a young girl. Thank you, Lord. To you be the praise. And a lady, young lady, thinking about suicide. Don't do it. The Lord is showing me a girl long hair, kind of light brown. I see you sitting on a couch. I see you looking at me wondering, is this real? Your boyfriend just left you for another girl. And you want to kill yourself. Is that worth killing yourself for? It's not that important. God will send you someone better than that young man will be your husband one day. But today, trust the Lord for your needs. In fact, young lady, you're holding a, like, uh, looks to me like a little box in your hand. I don't know what's in it, but there's a little box in your hand. So you'll know I'm talking to you. Jesus wants to set you free today. And Satan is playing with your mind. He wants to destroy you. He will not destroy you if you call on Jesus. Father, I pray this young lady today will be free from that tormenting devil in Jesus' name. Amen. You know, only God knows what happens in our hearts and minds. Little things like a boyfriend leaving can cause all kinds of trouble to take place. Now, get a Bible and read it. God will visit your life in a powerful way. Upcoming Crusades. This is your day. The multifaceted ministry of Benny Hinn is touching the world with the saving, healing, and life-changing gospel of Jesus Christ. Through massive crusades, daily television, feeding programs, orphanage support, church planning projects, and much, much more. Stay tuned for the next 30 minutes because this is your day to experience God's miracle working power in your life. This is your day. This is your day. There's an old song, you may know it. What can take away your sin? I'm glad you know it. What can make you whole again? Thank you, Jesus. And oh, precious is the Lord that makes me white as snow. Remember something, Satan cannot defeat you as long as you are under the blood. He cannot touch you, harm you if you're under the blood. 
Now, what is it to be under the blood? What does it mean? Does it mean every day you say the blood, the blood, the blood? It's more than that. You have to understand the work of the cross. What did Jesus accomplish on the cross? Now, the blood was shed seven times. It was shed in Gethsemane. As the pressure came upon the precious master. For now the sinless Lamb of God was about to become sin. He knew that God Almighty would leave him, the Holy Ghost would depart from him. He knew that moments, literally within moments, as he would carry that cross and be nailed to it, he would become sin for humanity. That pressure was so great, his heart nearly ruptured. Read Psalm 22 and you see what happened. Where clearly the psalmist describing Christ said, his heart ruptured. It nearly ruptured in Gethsemane. That's why the angel came to strengthen him. Now the Word of God states that blood flowed from his lovely forehead. The blood was shed first from his mind that your mind might be delivered. Today, because the blood was shed through his mind, you have the legal right to apply it on your mind. In fact, you would do yourself a great favor right now to place your hand on your head and apply that blood on your mind. In whose name? Yeah. The blood was shed first from his mind. Now the soldiers came after that with Judas the traitor. And Jesus came and said, who are you looking for? In John, we have the incredible details of the story of this event. Who are you looking for? Jesus of Nazareth, I am. The Greek, in fact, goes beyond the English because the actual words that Jesus used was, I am Jehovah, when he said, I am to them. And they all fell backwards. Now, he permits them, he allows them to bind him. The same people who could not get near him when he said, I am, now were allowed to come and bind his hands. Took him as a criminal. To the house of Caiaphas, and now he comes into the house of Caiaphas. And the scripture declares, oh, this is so mighty. And the scripture declares they began to buffet him. They beat his face. They punched him, in other words. They pulled his beard off, Isaiah 50 tells us. In fact, the scripture says they marred his face. The blood was shed first from his head, now from his face. Ladies and gentlemen, the scripture says he is the express image of the Father. 
He's the glory of God. When the blood was shed from his face, Isaiah described it and said, there was no beauty in him we should desire. He wasn't talking about the fact Jesus was ugly to look at. He's talking about the, the fact that when they marred him, they left his face so marred it was not recognizable. His face. The face of a man in the Old Testament always speaks of health and strength. The health of thy countenance, we read. He's the health of our countenance, our face. Health, strength, vitality, youth. The blood was shed from his face that you might remain strong that no weakness can touch your life. And now the scripture says, they took him from there to Pilate. And the soldiers began to mock him after Pilate had said to the Jews, he's yours sent him to what was called the Praetorium, the Hall. Echo homo, it's called in Latin. And they placed a crown of thorns over his head. And they took a reed and began to hit him on the head. The crown, the thorns going deep in his skull, exposing the bone. The head speaks of authority. The head is authority. The blood was shed to give you and I authority over the devil. And now, the scripture says, fourthly, they began to whip his back. And in Roman days, in ancient times, the, the, as they would whip a man, there was, in some cases, there was nails on that whip. And in other cases, there were sharp bones. But whatever, as the whip would touch the body of a man, it would go in. And these things would roll. They had like a little a little kind of a ball they would put on them and they would roll as they as they would whip the 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 whoever they were whipping and the nails would go into the flesh and pull it out every time they whipped him every time those nails or those sharp bones that rolled pulled that precious flesh That was a sickness that you suffered with and suffering with laid on that body. Every time he was whipped, sicknesses were placed on him. With every whip, more sicknesses. With every whip, more sicknesses. Till when they were done, every sickness known to humanity was laid on him. Every drop of blood that fell was the price for your healing. So today when you say, with his stripes, I am healed. My friend, with his stripes, you were healed. The blood, the blood. Number five, 
Now they took him to the cross and they nailed his hands, his hands speak of work. The blood was shed so you would not have to work for your salvation. It's by grace through faith. You don't have to work for it. And number six, they nailed his feet. Your walk. The blood was shed for your walk. That satanic influences and sinful filthiness will never grab your feet and stay. You may walk in this world, but will never be a part of it. And finally, a miracle took place. A miracle so great, sometimes I think we read the portion in the Word and really miss, miss why John said what he said. But one of the soldiers with a spear pierced his side, and forthwith came thereout blood and water. Now listen to this, and often we miss this part. And he that saw it bear record, and his record is true, and he knoweth that he saith, hear this, and he knoweth that he saith true, that ye might believe. Now, why would John write that? Why would he say, I saw it, and the record is true, and it's true, so you might believe? Believe what? This was a miracle. A dead body cannot give forth blood and water. If the, if the body was alive, yes. Doctors will tell you it is impossible for a dead body to have any strength or any life in it to pour anything out. There came forth blood and water, and this water, th th there's no way they say that after death that the lungs could even contain this much that could flow out. Because by that time, your muscles and the way the body is, is dead. It can't give out anything. The moment the blood and the water gushed out, that was a miracle. In fact, there were two miracles. One caused the soldier to say, this truly is the Son of God. And that's when he cried and gave up the ghost. The reason the soldier said, this is truly the Son of God, is because you got to understand something. The loss of blood, loss of strength, loss of everything, it would have been impossible for him to even whisper. You couldn't even whisper after all that you, 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 you had lost blood, you had lost strength, you lost all this. Impossible to even whisper. Yet the scripture says he cried with a loud voice, and when the soldier heard the loud voice, he said, no one can do this but God. No one can do this but God. And he was amazed. The soldier was amazed because here is a man dismissing his own spirit. Into thy hands I commit my spirit. Do you know, you and I cannot dismiss our own spirits, but he did. Why? Because he laid it down. God Almighty can dismiss his own spirit and take it back again. Jesus said, I, I laid my own life down and I'm going to take it back again, and he did. But now this is another miracle. A double-edged spear pierced his side. And blood and water. Why? Remember back in Genesis, God Almighty put the first Adam to sleep and pierced his side and took out his wife. 
the moment Jesus died to fulfill Adam sleeping in the garden. A soldier pierced his side, fulfilling God, opening the side of Adam. God in Genesis took a rib, but now the blood on the water come out. Why? The church was born. The church was born. You and I were brought into birth the moment the blood and the water flowed out because John said we were bought with the blood and the water. We came forth with blood and water. The water is the word. So now the seventh shedding of blood from his side. You can claim today protection for your mind, protection for your health and strength. You can claim today authority through the blood. You can claim healing through the blood. You can claim grace through the blood. You can claim a clean life through the blood. And you can claim I'm a part of the family of God forever through the blood. It is the blood that maketh an atonement for the soul. Saints, when you mention the blood, every demon runs. When you mention the blood, every sickness bows. When you mention the blood, Satan himself disappears out of sight. When you mention the blood, the Holy Ghost shows up. When you mention the blood, Jesus is glorified. It soothes my doubts and it calms my fears. Thank God for the blood. It dries all my tears. The blood that gives me strength from death. To reach to the highest. Let me hear that saxophone, brother. It flows to the lowest valley. In the blood that gives me strength from death.
word declares, and when I see the blood, no plague can touch your life when the blood is there. No sickness can touch your life when the blood is applied. Remember, once the blood is applied, no demon in hell can touch your life. Satan himself cannot cross that line when the blood of Jesus is applied. And today, Father, we apply the blood upon our lives, our families, our homes. Protect your people. It is the blood that maketh an atonement for the soul. Cleanse your people too, I pray, from every sin and stain. Your word declares if we confess our sin, you're faithful and just to forgive us all our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Cleanse your people and heal your people, Lord, today. Let the mighty power of the Holy Spirit right now come, bringing health and restoration to each life, I pray. Because of the work of the cross, because of the shed blood of the cross, your precious blood, heal your people, deliver your saints. In Jesus' name, amen. And God's people said, amen. And Lord, I lay my hands upon these knees, and I believe today, miracles in every life, we bind the spirit of the enemy. We command you, Satan, go in the name of Jesus. Lord, touch your people today. Amen and amen. Upcoming crusades, powerful crusades are coming up. First, we have one service only, Anaheim, California, May 24th, at the Anaheim Convention Center. Great service. That's a Friday night. Columbus, Ohio is May 30, 31 at the Schottenstein Center, that great crusade coming up there in Ohio. Then we come to Sydney, Australia, Sydney Entertainment Center, June 7 and 8. Then Dallas, Texas is June 27, 28 at the American Airlines Center. Then Toronto, Canada, a great crusade at the Air Canada Center, July 11 and 12. New Jersey will be July 25, 26 at the Continental Airlines Arena. Then Washington, D.C., August 29 and 30 at the MCI Center. And Louisville, Kentucky, Freedom Hall, September 19 and 20. Also, we have upcoming conventions for you wonderful partners and friends of this ministry. Chicago, Illinois, UIC Pavilion, August 7, 8, 9. Then Las Vegas, Nevada, September 11, 12, 13 at the International Church of Las Vegas. These are conventions where I minister the word and also we'll be praying for the sick. They're different than the Crusades, of course, but also very anointed. I'm sending you some powerful teachings in the mail. Make sure to get these teachings today. If you're not on our mailing list, call today, 817-722-2000, or simply write us, Box 16, 2000, Irving, Texas. Also, these books on health, because the Word of God talks about not only healing, in the divine realm, but also healing and health in the natural realm. Remember that God Almighty in His Word talks about the natural means we can use, the foods we eat, the, the, the things we do that can bring health our way also, for God wants you whole. Remember that. Miracle Food Cures from the Bible is a very important book that I have found, and I would like to see you get it. This book will talk about foods that they ate in Bible days, and how these foods can help you today. Call 1-800-433-1900. Order this book today for a donation of $50 or more. You're not buying this book. You're making a donation to our ministry to help us do the work of the Lord. Then Don Corbett was with me a few days ago. My own doctor wrote a book, What Would Jesus Eat? Powerful book, again, on foods that will help you for a $40 donation. And Dr. Cherry was also with us a few days ago. His uh, 